Hello everybody and welcome back. So let's get right into the uh, work I got done this week. So first thing first is gonna be the plaster. Uh, as you can see, I've got quite a bit of it done up here, which is good. Uh, and then I am starting to slowly fill the hole over here. Uh, that's got four layers on it now, if you can believe it. And we're still about an inch and a half off because uh, you can't really run this stuff much more than a half inch. I've also somewhat cracked the code on the plaster up here, guys, as far as getting it to stay without cracking like crazy. Uh, essentially, it's just lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of water and really watching it. Um, I tend to like to make or mix this stuff so where it's somewhat thick. Um, you know, obviously it sticks better, but I, I basically just learned that I need to make it extremely runny with water and that seems to do the trick. Um, still makes it a lot less uh, easily workable. Um, but it hasn't been cracking as bad, so that might be the, the trick to that. So when you're in hot weather, mix more water into it, quite a bit more water. Um, you know, make it less like pudding and more like milk, <laughs> I guess, I don't know. I'm no professional guys, so you know, take my advice with a grain of salt as I am learning a lot of these things myself for the first time. So I don't have the answers to everything. You know, I am a student of the house as well, so. The other bit I am trying to figure out is the other two windows in the maid's room, which are just next door to this room. Um, and this is the pediment, I believe is the name of this guy here. It's the top bit that goes on the window on the outside. Uh, you've guys seen me clean a few before, but this one has some problems, uh, mainly being that they ran electrical through it and yeah, a, well, a lot of different times, I guess, because there was only two that had ceramic uh, tubes still in it. Uh, the other ones were just open to the weather, which I'm sure did wonder wonderful, wonderful things to that window. Um, although I don't really see very much damage on the window itself just here. Um, but this stuff is, is pretty bad. Um, but to find another one of these or to have one made is uh, really expensive or, and or really hard to do. Um, I don't have the expertise um, even with like my router to make this piece itself. So what I'm going to do is wood fill it. But, but to do that, you have to have something to have the wood filler back up to. And that's where this dowel rod comes in. Basically, I'll sand this to the correct diameter of each one of these holes, jam it into the plate so it comes up to the bottom of these uh, ridges here, or these lines here, these valleys, and then wood fill the rest of it. So the wood fill is simply backing it that'll hold it all together, uh, as well as glue all this back together, you know, get everything sitting flat, uh, wood fill these really obnoxious holes and, and, you know, bits that aren't doing as hot. Um, yeah, and that should come out really nice. Um, luckily this is the only one that I've seen where they've done this goofy electrical thing. Um, the other one in the maid's room doesn't have this, so it shouldn't be nearly as hard to fix. Um, and the rest of it actually looks pretty okay. Like you can see, you just kind of kind of sand it down a little bit. And all of these pieces guys are on the back of the house. Um, and they don't have to be perfect. They just have to be, you know, pretty good. Like obviously it can't be rotten. It has to have uh, some structure to it. And these are all pretty pretty much fine. They're just really rough. I mean, they've been outside exposed to the weather for a hundred, you know, over a hundred years. So things do get beat up in the weather and uh, yeah, it's looking pretty good. Um, I'll have these all done probably Monday, Tuesday. I'm hoping to get uh, both windows done in the next week, which is my big thing. And for context, it's these two windows here. So those are the ones that are gonna, they're gonna be coming up next. Um, so yeah, uh, hopefully those will be nice and sorted out for next week, which uh, shouldn't be too big of a problem. And I'm sure you guys are all wondering what's going on with electric. Hasn't quite happened yet. Uh, supposedly the electrician has the 400 amp box in his hands currently and work should start Tuesday. Um, I'm reluctant to even say that because who knows? Um, but yeah, so we'll see about all that. Um, I know one thing, getting that would help a lot of things because it allows me to start actually buttoning up a few of these rooms. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes, uh, fingers crossed as usual. Um, but yeah, that's just the way things are in the building world today. Like 
stuff. I mean, people are busy. Things are hard to come by. It's just the, uh, the world we're living in these days, guys. So uh, be patient with me uh, as I be patient with my electrician and uh, we will get this place back together. It just, you know, like with everything, takes time and uh, it takes skill and it takes knowledge and it takes all these things that I have to learn and figure out to, to get moving with it. And uh, yeah, the nature of the beast, as they say. So I wanna to talk to you guys quickly about some of the really, well, two really cool things I found actually last week and went and got um, before I got sick. Um, I wanna show you guys those because these two items I think are really incredible and I'm really, really pleased with them, especially the one. So first thing I wanna show you guys is this new mantle we got in Tennessee. You can see my father walking back there. <laughs> um, and while no, this is not the original mantle, this is not what it probably looked like, it, it's pretty good looking. Like, and maybe in the future, if I can find photos of the original mantle, maybe we'll have those build, built and then uh, redo this. Um, this is the only bit of damage it's really on it. It's missing you know, the top of this piece, but it's not terribly noticeable and the rest of it's in amazing shape. It really is a pretty nice one. Like no complaints with it. It's, uh, you know, I just always get so hesitant about things like this because of Mr. Brown being a woodworker, you know that these would have been some spectacular woodwork for these, these fireplaces and I just want to get it right. I always have so many apprehensions about doing anything at this house because I just want it to be right. Um, so yeah, this is definitely, I think, a really good placeholder though. But uh, I am still of the belief and really hoping that one day, just one day, that I can find photos of the inside of this place and make it right. And then you can see how it kind of fits in the room. There's the ceiling. So, I mean, it works. Uh, could be bigger, but it is pretty. I do like it. And it matches the stairs quite nicely, the paneling on the stairs. So you see like you got all the paneling on the stairs here and it looks pretty close to that or it's extremely similar. So it kind of brings this room and that room together. And also, you know, it works with the doors and things like that. So it is rather nice. Another really cool thing that happened this week is a subscriber from Springfield, uh, Missouri uh, drove, or drove up, uh, his name's Matt and he gave me this really amazing map. Now it's raised in plastic right now, but the map is from 1904 and it was printed it's a reprint of a 1904 map from 1925 but you can see the the city hasn't really developed so far out yet for a reference for you guys this is uh, forest park and as you can see since 1904 it has all these structures in it from the 1904 world's fair which is pretty cool and then my neighborhood up here you can see where is it right here that line right there, that's the park, and that's uh, St. Louis Avenue right there. So my house is somewhere around there, about right there. So that's a pretty nifty little thing. Uh, got it framed and everything, which is pretty awesome. So thank you, Matt. It was wonderful, wonderful meeting you. So this is the other item that I was really, really excited to get. It's a, it's a Newell Post lamp. Um, now, of course, where the Newell Post was, I don't see any hole for electric, so I don't think there was one here originally. Not everything that's in here has to be exactly the way it was. And this is close enough in style. It is Art Nouveau, as you can see. The sculptor's name is Rousseau. Uh, he was French, but uh, yeah, very much so Art Nouveau. Uh, for those of you who know Alphonse Mucha, he's actually a really, like I really love his art. I have for a long time. In fact, I'll put some images up. I have a uh, goalie helmet I painted for myself that has Alphonse Mucha in it. I think I have the only goalie helmet like that probably in the world. Um, but yeah, it just shows that I really do enjoy his work I have for a long time. Um, so these very beautiful you know, features here are very reminiscent of his style. Now, the name of this piece I feel really works extremely well for the house. Uh, and you'll have to forgive me, I'm not a uh, French expert by any means. I can read German words, but not French. It's La Fortune, or uh, La Fortune. Let's just say it, I guess, like in my own accent. Um, which I looked up and it means uh, like the lucky one, or, you know, to have luck. And so I feel like in this process of this house, guys, that I've been extremely, extremely fortunate. <laughs> 
you know, you guys have always, you know, helped me with, with various things, be it information or items or just being happy to see what I do. Like, I don't know, I've gotten extremely lucky. And then things like the tiles that came back. I mean, I don't feel that that happens to anybody. I think that is the definition of luck. Shall we turn it on and then I'll share with you guys a bit more about it? And then she just glows. So does the room now too, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> but she is absolutely spectacular. I'm so excited to, to have her. So the other thing, one of the things you guys told me, um, or one of the things I heard in the comment section at one point is that families of houses like this, once they paid the house off, that's when they would add a newel post lamp like this. And since this is the lucky, you know, the fortunate one, she has like, you know, all the coins and there's checks and bills and coins by her feet and she's on a winged tire. And I think that's kind of like, well, you've paid off the house, you've got lucky. So I don't know, I think it kind of works with my story and the house's story, even though, you know, again, it's not the quite the right era. Like, I mean, could you argue with how beautiful it is though? I think it's just going to look so wonderful in here. So I'm very, very excited to have it. I've always kind of dreamed of having, you know, that entryway. And you first thing you walk in, you see this beautiful piece of art. Um, not unlike you know, like the Magic Chef house. But it's the focal point of when you first come into room. This is the first thing you will see. Uh, you know, imagine the front door with stained glass. And this will be the first thing you'd see when you, when you enter that little area. Oh, it's going to be awesome. So when you do come by, you can have uh, the lucky one <laughs> welcome you into the home. So still on the topic of lights, guys, I did get this really cool sconce at the same place I got um, the fortunate one here. Um, this one's really cool though, and there's not a whole lot of these out there. It's uh, the half gas, half electric um, sconce. So this is gonna be amazing here for the hallway. So let me show you where I plan on putting this, this pretty, pretty lady. So you can see right here underneath the stairs for context, I guess. So you can see there's the stairs going up. And yes, I know the lighting is a little harsh in here right now. It is starting to get dark. And so you can see this guy or girl would go right there. And that is going to be amazing because it keeps the hallway cohesive because that's the half gas, half electric uh, chandelier there. And then this one, the sconce should work perfectly. It's also the only place that I've seen for a sconce down here on this first floor. So I think having one like this would be really amazing. And that's really quite a pretty piece as is. And of course that one's rewired. It's, it's all pretty much ready to go, right? Uh, including the electric the, or the gas. It's now an electric fixture, but my buddy Justin going to estate sales this weekend found these two for like basically no money. I think he said he paid $3 or $4 a piece for each of these. And these are the exact same thing that that is. He said it's just missing the fixtures and you know, the, the fitters for the, the glass. So you can see you have your gas jet up here, electrical outlet here, sconce side, you know, and then obviously you're missing the glass domes and then same thing here. But I mean, for four bucks, this is an amazing find. And so now I got to find uh, more places for more <laughs> really pretty sconces, but I don't think I'm gonna have a problem with that because there's plenty of places to put some really, really beautiful sconces. But uh, this one being the larger one, it definitely should stay down here in the hallway. I want it to be just like, you know, uh, the null post lamp. I want it to be one of the first things you see because I think it's rather pretty. And so that'll guide you down the hall to the uh, dining room. It was almost just lost on me the fact that this is the first time I've ever had a light on in this room. And it's pretty cool. <laughs> All the shadows being cast and everything. Yeah, I'm a fan. Now I can imagine having the lights over here. So that guys is going to do it for me for this week. I do hope you guys enjoyed as always. Uh, I did want to leave you guys one with one, with one last little thought from uh, last week's video. I just want to let you guys all know that video wasn't made to be like, oh, poor is me or whatever, or woe is me. 
Um, I know this is the internet. People are going to say mean things. Doesn't ever bother me. Don't really care. So actually, some of the time, I think it's kind of funny when people are mean. Because <laughs> it's just like, okay, you know, like, whatever, man. Have fun with that. Um, but, you know, that's, that's okay. That's, that, that was not the point of the video. The point of the video was they're the same sort of things that people said in the past and the thinking was pretty much wrong then and it's wrong now. And so the comparison was too, it was too good of a comparison and I think it was, I was really able to make a, at least a halfway compelling point about it all. Or at least show you, share with you guys my thoughts on the whole thing. Um, I know it's in no way comprehensive or anything like that. Also, yes, I was very tired last week and I was a bit stressed out just because I didn't know how I was gonna lay that video out. And then on top of that, coming off from being sick makes it, uh, it just makes it difficult, you know? So, also this week I've got an influx of a lot of things that you guys have sent me that I'd like to go over in more detail than I can do in this video. So there should be a Thursday video out of just awesome things that you guys have sent me. Uh, I wanna thank you guys all so much, but I wanna be able to personally thank you and it doesn't sometimes have enough time to get it in a video like this. So that'll be coming out really, really soon. And uh, yeah, thank you guys specifically because you guys uh, so selfless to send me such amazing items. And so, yeah, you guys are wonderful. Thank you. So thanks again, everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week. And we'll see you guys again real, real soon. Goodbye.